Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame, and this is the recap review for Greenleaf. Y'all, I know I'm late on this, but um, a lot of heavy stuff has been going on in my life. And um, I'm okay. It's just a lot of stuff with my family and some of my friends. Um, we just had a death in the family um, early this morning. So um, please lift my family up in prayer. A lot has been going on. When I when I come on here and tell y'all, a lot has been going on. And that's why I'm behind on stuff. Like, I'm for real. Like, something, at least one major thing has really happened that has made it uh, made it in a way where if I try to get on here and do a video, I'm not going to be in the right mental headspace in order for me to really get through it. So, that's why I just choose not to even get on here. But I'm okay. And like I said, just please lift my family up in prayer. All right, y'all. So let me go ahead and get into this recap review, y'all. So it starts out showing Darius uh, being bailed out of jail by Grace. Now, I didn't know what was going on last time. I was just like, please don't let this man be somewhere dead, body chopped up, put in a, a freezer or something. Because people who want power, they are kind of, especially the type of power that Bob Whitmore wants, they are above doing whatever they have to do to get people out of the way so that they don't end up, you know, messed up in the process and anybody for anybody to mess up what they're trying to get going. So I was like, Lord, I don't know what they did with Darius, but hopefully Darius ain't dead. Darius is not dead. He was in jail. They sat up there and tried to make it seem like he was high off PCP. And um, they they created all kinds of lies, talking about he was under the influence and all this other stuff. They impounded the vehicle that he was in. And when Grace bailed him out and they actually pulled the car around from the impound lot, she was looking like, really? So you were supposed to be, you know, high off PCP in this vehicle? Oh, okay. Y'all not a scratch on it. None of that. If somebody was going through and on some sort of drugs, like what they tried to make it seem like he was on, oh, the truck would have been total scratched up something, but it looked like nothing was wrong with that truck. And we already know he ain't do nothing, so they tried it. Anyway, um, she's thinking that, you know, he's been in sale all night. Or however long it's been. And he gonna go home and take a shower. No. Darius was like, oh no, I'm not going home. I'm about to still go meet up with the person who said that they, you know, had dealings with this stuff done with eating bell lending. And so, like, she's kind of shocked. And he was like, nah, you know, it is what it is. I gotta go get this done. I'm leaving straight from here to go there. And so, you know, Grace is like, be careful. And, you know, okay, cool. Um, and... You know, he kind of wanted to know, you know, what's going on with the church. And, you know, he actually thought that they'd already knocked it down. And she was like, no, um, we kind of have something in place for right now that's keeping them from doing that. But we're going to head down there right now. So Bishop and Lady May are at the house and Bishop comes into the bedroom with this tray. And it seems like he's about to serve her breakfast in bed. And... um we can kind of gather that he must not be able to cook nothing because she was not here for it at all. <laughs> so he ends up actually removing the little dome that was covering a box that had a ring inside of it. And apparently it's some ring that May uh, was presented years and years ago uh, by Bishop. And she was excited in the moment. And, you know, in his mind, he's hoping that her seeing this ring, it would bring back amazing memories that they had in the past when they first were together. And maybe she'll want to move up the date of the wedding. And y'all, they kind of start getting into it again about the house and all this stuff with Daryl James. And she's dead set against, you know, moving forward until all of that stuff is squared away. And in her mind, she's like, look, what I need to do is sell off acres of this land and pay Tara off, you know, try to offer up something. I'm going to meet up with her later on. And like, he, of course he ain't here for it. He is just like, to me, that's basically admitting that I was at fault and that I did do something to their daddy, which I didn't. So, you know, of course they are not on the greatest of terms right now. And he didn't, you know, left out the room 
kind of upset y'all. So, y'all, Jacob is in his room looking through baby pictures of Winky when Zora comes in. And of course, y'all know how she is. I understand she's a teenager and basically, you know, grown. And they already said what they said to her the day prior. Because y'all know this is literally going from day to day. This is what the seventh day. Y'all, and she's looking like, um, yeah, so I haven't canceled my ticket. And, you know, I'm supposed to be going to New York. So, you know, have y'all discussed my room and board, you know, the person that I'd be living with, all this other stuff, because I'm still trying to go. Jacob ain't trying to hear that. He was like, look, we're going to talk about that. And you might well go ahead and uh, cancel that flight and get the money back. And we'll get another one later on because we're not discussing that right now. <laughs> and she ain't really trying to hear that. And, you know, she was just like, well, look, you know, can you look at this? I see this studio apartment. And she tried to make it seem like the studio apartment is so small that, you know, he would not have to worry about boys. And all of that because it's so, so super small. Nobody would be living with her and all. I'm like, girl, don't nobody care if you was in a, a brown box on the side of the street. That's big enough <laughs> in the eyes of a lot of people. So ain't nobody trying to hit nothing when you're talking about, oh, it's just a studio apartment that's really, really small. You ain't got to worry about boys. Oh, okay, girl, whatever. So he ain't trying to hit nothing that she's talking about. And he was like, it's going to happen, but you might as well go ahead and cancel them plans on that ticket. Y'all, anyway, AJ is at the house and Bishop and him start talking. And he actually, you know, of course, he's there for the car project. And I don't know if y'all caught it, but the Bishop, for a minute, he seemed like he was forgetting that he was there for the car and you know y'all I was like look y'all gotta stop I'm tired y'all gonna stop doing this to Bishop <sighs> so they were having their little moments so I was like okay yeah come on uh grandfather grandson time I'm here for it y'all Judy Fernando and Phil are outside of the church and Grace and her brother um, Aaron roll up and they they basically have put in a temporary injunction so that they can't do any kind of demolition to the church. And it's all pending upon whether or not uh, Jacob is actually able to get through to Carissa to ask her if she knew ahead of time that H&H &H were affiliated and, you know, they were who they were. Before she actually was like, okay, I'm going to sell the land to y'all when she was dealing with Fernando. Y'all, Jacob had called his helper to ask her because he was like, it's dependent upon if you knew or not. And, you know, please tell me you didn't know. Of course she knew. And so she's like, sorry, Jacob. Y'all, Jacob is tired. Y'all, do y'all notice the facial expressions? Like every single time he talks to her. With the exception of the last episode when they were parting ways. He looks more and more tired in his spirit <laughs> with each passing second, whatever he's talking to. It's helpful. Like I and I feel you, Jacob. Like Jacob, you trash at times or whatever, but like you've been coming through. And it's like, I don't know how to feel. You making me feel like I'm crazy for even kind of being on your side because of all the trash stuff you've done. But at the same time, I feel you because Carissa is trash at this point. I ain't, I ain't never liked Carissa. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. Like, she has literally always rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm just like, I don't know what it is about this helpful. But usually I'm right about people. And I was right about this helpful. I said what I said. Anyway, he tied in his spirit. And you know what I'm saying? All of that stuff is tied in and it's like, girl, you were so desperate to try to get a house that never even came to fruition and you done sold your soul literally to the devil. But okay, go off again. Um, AJ and Bishop are now finally outside where the car parts are and AJ is just out there and then the Bishop joins him and <laughs> AJ ain't got no way. He ain't even pried the box open. He ain't, he ain't even pried it open yet. Where the crowbar at though? Like, I was like, what is going on? Why? Y'all, anyway, you know, they start talking and the bishop um, asks him if he's been saved. And, you know, he was like, nah. The bishop is kind of um, shocked because y'all already know a lot of people, whether they've been in the church before or not, when they've gone into the system, 
they either become Muslim or they find God and all these other things. And neither of those things happened for AJ. He told the bishop that he went to church very rarely. So, you know, he ain't about that life like that. And so the the bishop asked him, you know, do you want to get saved? And he was like, I don't know about all that. I don't know about that today, but I hear you though. <laughs> and so the bishop was like, you know, he was like, I'm not going to pressure you, you know. That can wait. And when he said that can wait, I was kind of like, Bishop, you already know good and well that eternal hell and uh, damnation and all that stuff just, you know, can't wait because he could walk right outside of that door and um, a bomb could just go off and kill him and he's gone. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I was like, okay, what kind of foolishness is this? But okay, like, I, I mean, I get it. But at the same time, I was like, Bishop, now nah, you, you already know. Don't do this. So anyway, you could tell, well, to me, it seemed like AJ was kind of open to the idea because the way Bishop talks to you, it makes you feel like, wow, this is really something I might need to do a little research on and get into because... I'm here for it. Bishop, he just really has a way of coming across to people. So I can understand how there have been so many people under his leadership who, you know, were a part of the flock for so long before all this H&H &H stuff happened. Y'all, Grace and Noah went to see the dude who was the caretaker at the time when Miss Davis was alive. And they're talking to him. And oh boy was like, well, I mean, I guess since Miss Davis is dead, I can, you know, tell y'all stuff. It ain't no secret no more because y'all... They over here talking to this man like he didn't know who the who the um the colored person was. And he was like, um, no, I know who it is, but um let me think about it. I guess I can tell y'all. I mean, because she did. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I already knew. I was like, come on now. Come on now. And you know, it turns out that Miss Davis was Daryl James's mama and um it's crazy to me because, like, I don't know what they were talking about, but apparently, like, he would be taking care of the grounds and stuff. He would kind of overhear them going back and forth, and he was just shocked that he was, you know, allowed, in a sense, to just talk the way he was talking to her, but he knew the T. So, it's like, how are you going to be shocked, but you already knew what it was, meaning that that was his, his whole mama, but okay. But, like, he kind of made me kind of raise my eyebrow when he was, like, there were times that he would kind of butt in when it seemed like the conversations were getting a little heated because he kind of felt like she was going to get hit or something by him. I was like, what? Y'all, I don't know. But anyway, I, I was like, oh, okay. But, yeah, I already figured that out anyway. I, I knew it had to be somebody. Somebody had something to do with somebody being kin to this heifer in some way. I knew that that's what it was. But that's what it is, y'all. That's his mama. So, anyway, y'all, Bob plans to make an announcement at the church right before the demolition to state that this is going to be him running for the candidacy um, at, uh, for the Senate or whatever. Like, he's doing the most. And I'm like, really? This is what you're going to do at the church? This is what you're doing? So, you want a plane coming in and you want all the people who are members at the church to come and sit in as you make your little announcement. They're going to be cameras there. They're already going to be cameras there anyway because you're tearing down this church. You're doing the most already. So, y'all, I'm just like, Ugh, whatever, sir. Anyway, Grace came in because um, Charity and the bishop were sitting down watching it as they saw, you know, the reporters reporting on that stating that that's what he was going to do. And she was like, oh, yeah, I already heard about that. I heard it on the radio while I was on my way over here. Y'all, look, this is what's going on. Um, And told them about what the caretaker said. Everybody is thrown off. The bishop is over in a corner. He done got up and he looking away like, oh, my God, this is too much. This is really too much. Like, the bishop is done, like, every other second. Like, every sing literally every single day, y'all. Literally every single day, something is coming out, and the bishop is tired. Y'all, Zora made up her mind she's not changing her flight. She's going to leave whether her parents do what they're supposed to do in her mind or not, 
and she's just not going to tell him. But she kind of wants her cousin to put in on it because her mama got all this money. And, you know, in a way she should kind of consider it because she ain't got nothing else going on. And I'm pretty sure she wants to somehow put all that Dante mess behind her. It's like, girl, I know you ain't finna stay there and just keep on subjecting yourself to that because all she does is sit around and mope about it and it's like girl go to new york go somewhere and get that off of your mind so zora ain't got time and she's gonna continue on with her plans y'all so tara and rochelle met at the house with lady man bishop and they're talking and they tried to offer up the land the money for the land all this other stuff y'all know rochelle ain't trying to hit that she was like that's not why i'm here i don't care nothing about this house i don't want the money i want you to confess what you did to my daddy and it kind of turns into an argument i'm just like lord so while they in the middle of talking jacob comes in and he was like y'all i'm sorry to interrupt but Charity sent out this email blast to everybody and she was saying that if y'all want to find out some, you know, certain type of information that you need to come down to the church and there are already at least 100 people who've already shown up because information is about to come out. And so the bishop straight up told Rochelle, like, look, if you want to know the truth about what happened to your daddy and all this stuff that's going on, come down to the church and you'll get your answers that you're seeking. So, y'all, Darius met up with Grace and everything checks out with that person that he ended up meeting up with who had that policy and all that stuff. Y'all, he about to, you know, they all at the church. Like, literally, everybody has gone down to, at the church. They, everybody's down at the church. Everybody tied. Y'all, Bob is in the sanctuary feeding these lies to the congregation and anybody else who has decided to come in and wants to know what's going on. And um, this woman stood up and was like, okay, so what's going on with this email that Charity sent out to everybody? Is all that stuff true? Y'all, he over here trying to make it seem like, oh, no, well, you know, some things happened and this is what Edenvale lending was and a lot of that other stuff is lies. But, you know, he really was trying to make it seem like what he was doing with Edenvale lending was helping black people and helping everybody or whatever. And then Charity had to stand up and was like, what you're not going to do is this, you a lie. And Grace stood up and said some things too. Everybody was just like, look, you know, you tried it. You did all this to all these low income black people. And when you knew they weren't going to be able to pay, you took their houses and land right out from under them and left them alone and destitute. Just stop the lies. And so everybody's in the crowd, shook, tired in their spirit. Like, everybody's done. Y'all, they even brought up Phil's mama. Y'all, they kept paying it over to Phil. Phil looked like he was going to kill everybody. I was like, please, somebody, please don't let him shoot up the church. Please don't, don't do it. Y'all, so it got to a point where people were just like, oh. <gasps> And I'm like, y'all didn't hear them say uh, Dumars the, the first time. Like, when they first mentioned everything about how she was the woman who was signing all the stuff and her name was on everything. I'm like, y'all know Phil's name is Phil Dumars, right? Oh, okay. Why are we acting dumb when, when you know, it's actually said out loud, it's Phil's mama. But anyway, y'all, Phil got tired of his spirit and he stood up and was like, look, when my mama was on her deathbed, she said to me that she did not feel easy in her spirit about everything that was going on and she didn't feel like God was going to forgive her. And he was just confused because he was like, what in the world could my mama have felt that she'd done so bad in life that God would not even accept her or forgive her? And now knowing all of this information, it makes a lot of sense because in essence, she was this black face that was put out there to make other black people feel comfortable in getting these policies and all this other stuff going and getting these contracts, getting all this crap. And they actually were signing their lives away. Like that's crazy. Um, yeah. Phil was so tired in his spirit that he was just like, you know what? I'm done with all this. <laughs> he asked Judy for the mama's ring back. And y'all, this heifer threw the ring on the floor, basically. Like, she dropped the ring on the floor. I'm sorry. If any time, I would have, like, literally been like, you know what? You get a pass today. If Phil had a backhanded that heifer, I would have been like, you know what? You get a pass today, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. That heifer is so disrespectful. I cannot. 
I was so done. She just dropped the ring on the floor. I was like, man, what are we not finna do with this? If he had a backhanded hug, I would have been like, you know what? It is what it is. Had to fortify you. It is what it is. Anyway, y'all, Bob tried to throw the bishop under the bus. The bishop done walked in, and he was like, I have so many sins that I have to confess. And, y'all, he just feels though as though he's at fault for a lot of things. And he was like, look, it's my fault how everything has gone down. And he, you know, Rochelle is there. Tara's there. They are standing in a crowd. Y'all, they looking like I'm tired. Like, Rochelle and the sister looking like this. Rochelle standing on this. I'm like, ma'am. Y'all, they tired this fear. So, they standing there. I'm like, Lord, what what is going to come of this? Because I feel like Rochelle going to set it off. The bishop is like, look, the only reason why this church even exists is because um, Mrs. Davis, Miss Davis ended up giving him that house. Had she not given him that house, he would not have been able to use it as collateral to have money in order to build that church from the ground up. And they just found out that the house that was given to them was originally supposed to be given to Daryl James and them. And y'all, it was just too, everybody is just shook and everybody is tired. Like everybody's like, okay, this is just too much. Like, too much tea has been spilled, like, y'all. But, um, yeah, that was a whole lot. And, like, Bishop has been carrying a whole lot. Y'all, I was like, the Bishop better not sit up here and say, <laughs> and say he was sleeping with this woman or nothing. Like, I'm just done. I was like, I'm going to be done with everybody. And I'm I'm not turning this TV on no more for this show if he say anything like that. Like, I didn't know what he was going to get up there and say. But, yeah, he had to say a whole lot of things in his life, y'all. Um, The Bishop... Started running down this list and you know, like he was just like, I feel like I failed y'all. Y'all, it just got to a point where, you know, people were like, no, you, you know, you did your job. And y'all, Corinne stood up and kind of gave him reassurance that, you know, all was not lost. And he did what he was supposed to do by the church and all this other stuff. And y'all, Charity started singing Amazing Grace. I rolled my eyes. I know I'm wrong, but Charity just irks my soul. Um, Rochelle is leaving out, right? And Grace stops her and was like, you know, did you get everything? You know, are you happy? Are you happy now? And so she was like, I mean, it is what it is. I finally got my answer. You know what I'm saying? She keeps trying to let everybody know it wasn't about the house. It wasn't about the money. I wanted answers and I got the answers that I've been seeking all this time. So she's still trying to leave. Grace stopped her again and was like, you know what? You know, thank you. She looking like, thank you for what? And she was like, everything with AJ, you know, I feel like he was trying to hurt me, trying to come at me. And, you know, she basically dug up her past about AJ. Nobody knew about all that stuff. And she was like, well, you know, it is what it is. And I just had to, you know, basically knock you down a couple of pegs and let you know and remind you that you are not above everybody else. You ain't squeaky clean. You ain't all the way everybody want to thank you all. Or whatever. And so she was like, you know, it ended up being a blessing. So it is what it is. Cool. Do what you do. And she basically told Grace, I feel like you trash for giving up your son. I was like, ma'am. But yeah. um, Charity was leaving, y'all. And here come Phil rolling up. I already knew this was going to happen. I was like, please just don't. Y'all. He wanted to talk to her. And y'all, I couldn't believe it. I thought this heifer was going to be dumb. But she was like, um, what we're not going to do is this. You hurt me. You broken my heart worse than anybody ever has. And that is including my ex-husband who ended up being gay. Like, I was like, girl, you tired of your spirit for real. <laughs> she was just like, yeah, I will never forgive you. I'm good on all of that. I will never take you back. I was like, okay, have fun. I, I, I see you. I see you. Okay. Y'all, Grace and Darius are together. And, you know, they have, they feel like there's a victory. And um, Bob Whitmore is stepping down from H&H, &H, y'all. They start making out a little bit. And he was like, you know, you want to take this back to my place or what? And she was like, man, maybe tomorrow Sophia wants to talk to me. So she went home to see what, what folk Sophia talked about. Sophia, <sighs> Sophia kind of tried to. She kind of tried to lead with something else. Talking about, oh, I think you did good at the church today. So she was like, is that what you wanted to talk to me about? Y'all, this heifer that sat up here and told her mama that she wants to uh, 
own up to the fact that she did what she did with them pictures and she'll never do that again, sending them pictures to Dante. And so her mama was like, what pictures? I was like, oh my gosh. My initial thought was right. She just said that to her, her and make her think that she did that. Oh my gosh. So Zora never even told her mama about the pictures. Zora got some stuff with her, but she actually didn't even say nothing. This heifer told her her own self. I'm like, you stupid heifer. <laughs> I'm like, if your mama didn't come to you about it, then maybe she's moved past it or maybe she don't know. You should have just assumed the later. I don't understand. Y'all, anyway, y'all, okay, so let me get my life together. So we at the end of the episode. Lady May is in the bed. And her and the bishop are about to go to bed. She's in a really great space. She feels like everything has been resolved. And now she was like, I was always going to, you know, marry you. And, you know, I don't care what day it is. We can get married anytime. I was just saying Black Day. It don't matter to me. Y'all, I think the bishop is over here having a whole stroke. And I'm tired. Like, I cannot. I can't, y'all. And it was just to the point... Was she like, baby? James. James. Y'all, I was like, Lord. He over here, you know, kind of motioning to her to, you know, that he needs to write something down. So she get a pen and she call 911 to tell them to come there immediately. Y'all, his eye closing and doing the most. I'm like, I don't have time for any of this. She ends up laying him down. I don't know if he'd have stroke out. I don't know if he stroked out and died or if he just stroked out and they got to get him. Like, I don't know if what's going to happen is he, we go, we going to see him laid up in a hospital bed as a vegetable. I don't know what's going on, but I'm tired. I'm real tired of my spirit. I ain't got time for this until I see black dresses and suits, flowers, and sad singing, I'm not for the believe that the bishop is dead. I'm real tired. I don't appreciate this. I know they said somebody was going to die this season, but I can't. I'm tired. I just really can't. The bishop that went through, he done went through way too much. Like, I, I understand it was an emotional toll, but Lord, uh, don't nobody have time for this, y'all. Lord, like, he can't talk. He could not talk or nothing. Like, he really tried his best. He ended up managing to write, I do. And so she was like, I do too, James, I do too. Just hold on. Y'all, she had to lay him down. And she was like, James, James, don't do this right now. James, don't do this. I was like, look, ain't nobody, y'all don't understand. My heart is toe up. I'm tired. My heart is so broken. I really hope he ain't dead, but I don't Y'all weigh in in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think that went down. Do y'all think he just stroked out? And he gonna have to kind of try to recover because he's older. Like you stroke out and you older. Uh uh uh. Too much is going on, y'all. Too much is going on. I'm so tired, y'all. I'm really livid at this point. <sighs> anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. I really do appreciate all the love and support that y'all give me. Thumbs this up if you want to. <laughs> Share it if you want to. All that good stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. I really do appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good night. Bye.